Hi everyone, it's Gigabeef here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MP5. I want to love the MP5. It's fairly cheap, it has low base recoil, it can take magazines up to 50 rounds. But the lack of decent ammo has always been its downfall, as most players who've used it sometimes end up in a situation where they wish they were running something else, usually against armoured players. But with the release of the new 7N31 ammo, does this change everything we knew about this gun? Stick around and let's get going. Alright, so the MP5 is a bit of an enigma for me. It feels pretty good to use even from stock, but the ammo is really average. It's quite cheap for the base weapon, but surprisingly expensive to add a few mods as nothing fits to it by default. There is a way to make this gun absolutely sing though, which I'll come on to later. But first, let's check out how it works and what is actually possible to do with the weapon. The base MP5 is sold by Peacekeeper Level 2 for around $300, which is pretty expensive as this is roughly 36,000 rubles. You can alternatively trade in 8 brand handled knives, which is an excellent trade for players under level 10 to get a decent automatic, and at stock it handles pretty well. With a high base ergo of 70 and a recoil of 40, it's actually very controllable without any mods whatsoever. However this comes with a downside. The reason it feels so nice is because it's running 9x19 Parabellum. I am a huge believer in ammo driving decision making in this game, and 9x19 is... well, it's not amazing, let's just put it that way. There are some interesting options such as rip rounds for high damage leg meta, but if you're going the conventional route of the highest armour pen possible, until very recently AP 6.3 was your absolute best option. It was never very expensive at under $3 per round, but with 30 pen it just struggles to get past armour even at level 4. To put it into context, AP 6.3 has the same pen as both the PP round for 545 and M855 for 556, and is actually worse than the base 762 round which is PS. However, with the advent of a new and better round, the 7N31 in 12.7, at 39 pen, we do actually stand a chance of causing some damage to players who have some kit. As you can see from the chart, this makes a massive difference around the level 4 to level 5 armour threshold. This gives us a damage profile of just under 1 pen under the FMJSX, which is the second best round for the MP7, better performance than 545BT by 2 penetration, and sits right between M856A1 and M855A1 for 556. All of that and 52 damage? This is starting to sound pretty good. Now the biggest issue is not the 589 rubles per round, but the fact that it is only made available from Prapor level 4, which means that it's only really feasible for players to run properly at the higher levels of the game. That and the fact that it's continuously out of stock. But let's leave that aside for a second, because I do believe that if you use this gun in the right way, you could do well with even using AP 6.3. To mod the MP5 we have to change quite a bit. The mods for the weapon hinge from the upper receiver, and primarily we're looking to add a handguard that allows foregrips and change the muzzle device. Fortunately, modding for this weapon is considerably easier than something like the M4, and there's fairly limited choice in what you can attach. Take the stocks for example. There are only two, if you don't count the capped end that removes it completely, both of which are pretty much the same. The first one has one more recoil and one less ergo, and vice versa, so we don't need to worry about this at all. There's a couple of handguards to replace the original, which has no recoil reduction but does have 10 ergo which is a lot for stock. One interesting thing about the MP5 is that because the recoil is already quite low and mods apply a percentage reduction in recoil, they actually do a lot less for this weapon than many others. The cheapest foregrip is the TL99 aluminium which gives no recoil benefit and only 6 ergo which is actually worse than the base one but allows you to add a foregrip. But with the expense of adding both the handguard and the foregrip together, even a decent value one like the RK0 at 7000 rubles for 3% recoil reduction, we've ended up with a recoil of 38 rather than 40 and spent 15,000 rubles already. The PTR tri-rail is a little better, but only gives 1% reduction for 11k. The best handguard for the MP5 is the weird looking CAA HX5 with minus 3% recoil reduction and plus 13 ergo for $134, which is roughly 16,000 rubles from Peacekeeper 3, to which we can attach a foregrip of our choice. 5 seconds before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more content like this in the future. Alright, let's carry on. Next up is on muzzles. This is also not too complicated either. There are two lugs that the MP5 can fit, the one that it comes with as base can attach a single compensator, and if you want to run a suppressor, you can use the threaded lug instead. The HK Noveske style compensator is the only comp for the MP5, and at 9,500 rubles from Mechanic 3, it gives a respectable minus 11% to recoil with only minus 2 ergo, which is pretty decent. Now if we switch over to the threaded lug, we can use suppressors instead. There's a range of suppressors, from the cheap and nasty for 12k, to the Osprey which gives minus 7 recoil and can be traded with a mechanic for a drill or bought off the fleet for 20k. These are fine. 
But now I'm going to let you in on the real secret of the MP5. There are two upper receivers that you can get, the standard one and the MP5 SD version. With the SD, you have no choice but to use the integrated suppressor, but this thing is insane. It provides minus 20% recoil. I don't think there is another attachment in the game that gives this recoil in a single slot. This turns the MP5 into an absolute monster. It's $248 for around 30k, but we're not actually going to buy this. Instead, Peacekeeper Level 2 holds these pre-made in stock. Tarkov's modding system doesn't differentiate these two weapons from each other and just calls them MP5, so they both come up in the same category on the flea because you can technically make one from the other. Most people run into this on the gunsmith quest and then think nothing more of it. But as there is no MP5 lower from the traders that you can buy, unlike many other weapons, and all the pieces of the SD are more expensive separately than if we just buy the whole package from Peacekeeper, we get a recoil of 26 and an ergo of 69, for $489, which is roughly 60,000 rubles. You can't even add a different handguard or foregrip, so we're not tempted to try and get it lower. And what will be the point? This gun is absolutely insane the way it is. It has lower recoil than the best in slot MP5 mods, and also comes suppressed already, and the suppressor works incredibly well, as the gun is super quiet. This is why I believe that you can do just fine with AP6.3 as well, as the SD is a headshot machine. At 800 RPM, it fires as fast as an M4, but nothing insane like the 900 plus of some of the other SMGs. Although this does negatively affect time to kill slightly, it also helps to firstly conserve ammunition in routine encounters, and secondly helps to make the recoil basically non-existent. I've been really impressed when using it recently, allowing you to do things like strolling forwards, ADSing, laser beaming people at medium distance. It really is a joy to use. The only things that we can add here are a laser using the ring mount that attaches to the suppressor directly, and a mount for a scope on top like the normal MP5. There are two mounts, but they are very similar. The cheap one loses you an ergo point, and the optics sit higher on this mount than the other, so the expensive one does feel nicer to use. For scopes themselves, you can use whatever you want here, but I've been flitting between the PK06 or the Pillard Weaver for close range, and the Monstrum 2x or the Elkan 1x4 for a bit more flexibility in longer range engagements. You won't be sniping with this weapon, but it performs surprisingly well at longer ranges. One interesting point about this is that 7N31 increases the muzzle velocity quite significantly of the weapon. You can check what this is if you load different rounds into the chamber. The default here is 278 meters per second, and for AP6.3 this has improved a little bit to 321, which is 15% faster. But when you load a 7N31 in, this has a greatly improved velocity of 459 meters per second, which is 65% faster than base, and 43% faster than the AP6.3. This both helps with lower bullet drop, and also faster hits when fighting over a longer distance, which requires less lead time, and this makes the MP5 more viable and even more versatile than it ever has been before. The other consideration is on magazines. You can get 20, 30 and 50 rounders for the MP5. Don't bother with the 20s, as the 30s are very cheap. Between 30 and 50 is a tough one. The 50s do add a lot to the price, as they can't be bought directly and are only available to the trade for PSUs that are normally priced around 40k. So on the flea for 25,000 is typically the best place to get them, but they turn the MP5 into a little machine gun with just under 4 seconds of hold down the trigger in full auto time, which is insane. However, with the ammo being quite hard to buy, I would advocate packing the bottom of your mags with 6.3 if you're not able to build up much of it, given you can only buy 90 at a time. This is less of a cost issue and more a logistical one, around if you lose 250 rounders of it, that's your trader reset allowance gone in one raid. Ultimately, one additional plus point for the MP5 SD is just how little time it takes between raids to get kitted up, which for me is a big win. Limited modding and you're good to go with super low recoil and a smile on your face. The only other gun that comes close on recoil is the MPX, and you have to spend quite a lot of money on it so that it performs in the same way. I've been enjoying the MP5 SD a lot since I've given it a second chance, and I hope that you get to play around with it and have as good a time as I have been having. So please remember to sub and hit the bell if you want to see more videos like this in the future. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I stream on Twitch on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturday evenings UK time. And until then, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.